my youth, the dream was to join the fleet air arm and to become a, a, a pilot. I did end up by getting my private pilot's license, but never landed on a boat. But I also had the dream of maybe one day living on an island. And that dream did come to pass. My wife and I were both working shift work. It got that way where we used to meet in the hall from time to time. My job was a little boring and I was looking for something a little bit different to do. And an ad came up in the paper for lighthouse keepers. At that time it was almost certain that you would uh, be stationed at Matsaika and uh, so with that in mind I uh, drove down to uh, Cape Bruni to have a talk to the keepers there and uh, to you know, get an idea of what things were like and then uh, on down to Dover and on to the Kathleen Del Mar uh, with the crew on the mail run to Matsaika. Uh, there I had the opportunity to uh, speak to one of the keepers down on the landing and uh, rather liked what I saw. Matt was a spectacular place. So, in went the application and ultimately back came the answer and I was appointed as a lighthouse keeper. We were however appointed to uh, Tasman Island and on the 1st of May 1969 we boarded the Cape Pillar in Hobart and loaded all our gear on and so on and departed on the 2nd of May. Travelling via uh, Matsaika Island where on the uh, 3rd of May we dropped off a brand spanking new Land Rover and took off the old one. And then overnight and via Port Arthur where uh, a seaman was put off with toothache, which had, of course, uh, <laughs> generated quite a lecture from the uh, the skipper the previous evening. Later in the morning of the 4th of May, 1969, the MV Cape Pillar anchored in the channel between her namesake, Cape Pillar, and Tasman Island. What an awe-inspiring sight that was, the cliffs towering above us, the landing perched up on the, on the rocks some uh, 70 or 80 feet above the water, the haulage way hanging precariously below the cliffs of Tasman Island. What had we let ourselves in for? We were bundled into the workboat and uh, chugged into a position under the flying fox, suspended between a tripod arrangement up on the landing and anchor rock. And from there we were hoisted up onto the landing in the flying fox itself, where we could gaze down on the site of the Cape Pillar and the workboats bringing all our gear ashore. My reverie was uh, broken and I came back down to earth with a thud when the relief keeper, uh, Ken Short, uh, yelled at me, you're not here for an effing holiday, get to work. I learned that the head keeper, John Martin, was off on leave and that the chap driving the flying fox, Alan MacDonald, was acting head keeper. I helped load some of our gear onto uh, one of the trolleys and uh, we were then eventually hauled up the haulage way to the top where I met the other relief keeper, John Davis, who, surprise, surprise, what a small place Tasmania is, I had gone to high school with. Later in the day, John left the island and that left uh, Anne and myself and uh, the acting head keeper, Alan MacDonald, and his wife Kay and their two children, and Ken Short as sole residents of the island. Not 
quite the uniform of a pilot in the fleet air arm, but certainly uh, master of all I surveyed. Life as a lighthouse keeper on Tasman Island began in earnest. On the 27th of May, uh, Anne went off, uh, off the island, uh, not to return again until the 10th of June. And uh, in the meantime, I set up the radio gear and uh, enjoyed the hobby of amateur radio, meaning that I never really left my friends. I was in an ideal position to, in, to enjoy the relative solitude of living on an island. In my previous job as a technician at a radio broadcast station, I'd spent uh, many, many hours uh, uh, alone, so life on the lights was very little different. Anne returned to the island on the uh, 10th, and on the 24th, John Martin came back to the island from leave, and uh, it was the first time we had met him, of course, and Ken Short, the relief keeper, went off. The island now had its full complement of crew. Uh, my diary mentions that on the 26th of June, uh, Alan came down from the tower looking terrified. There'd been a lightning strike somewhere close by, and uh, uh, flames had sort of shot around inside the, uh, the lantern room. So uh, life was not without its excitement on the island. The Cape Pillar came back to the island in uh, July. We got to meet Mr. Tyndall, our young and brand new engineer. And uh, Anne went off the island again with the Cape Pillar. Uh, the Cape Pillar came back again uh, a, a week or so later with a new stove for the number one quarters and a new hot water cylinder for number three. And the routine of uh, running the light station continued. We had visits from uh, Peter Bannock the electrician. We also had visits from the RAAF through the, uh, through the month of uh, August uh, for uh, HS 748s, I think they were called. Uh, uh, they were twin turbo aircraft that the RAAF at the time were using for navigation training from East Sail in Victoria. And uh, they would regularly come over the island and on the last occasion that they were with us, we, uh, they put on quite a display. Uh, we used to run out with their yellow raincoats and wave them madly, so they would got to know us. And so life uh, continued on the island. We settled into the routine, Navy-like, of uh, if it moved, grease it. If it didn't, paint it. Uh, each lunchtime after the morning's work, the, the boys would get together for a game of darts and a, and a beer. In the afternoons, depending on what shift we were on, we were either on watch, looking out for ships and so on, or, or snoozing. Uh, each night, the head keeper, and there he is, John Martin, uh, would uh, light up the light, and then Alan or I would uh, take over on the middle watch, uh, followed by the other on the morning watch and so on. When we had time, we wandered around the island and uh, looked at the scenery. Here are the monkeys, of course, off the southern end of the island. And uh, uh, about this time, I also uh, started producing a weekly, well, I suppose you'd call it a, a, a one-page magazine, which went down uh, very well. One day, while we were wandering around the island, right out towards the, uh, the southern end, we uh, spotted one of our poor little sheep stuck down on a ledge. We notified uh, John, the head keeper, and uh, we took the tractor over to the, the top of the cliff, used it as an anchor, and John went down over the edge to rescue the thing. That's not something Alan or I would have done, because that's where he was. When the rain falls, we had foggy days, beautiful sunrises. And sunsets and life was great on the island until on the 5th of September 
John got news that he'd been transferred to Cape Sorrel and everything from then on virtually changed. That's the head keeper and the light keeper at uh, Cape Sorrel had had some sort of an altercation which involved a firearm. The police were called in and both of them were fired. Uh, Frank Armstrong and uh, Ken Shorts uh, were sent around from Cape Bruni in the interim and John and his family had just a few days to pack up and, and be off and made a send up a send off cake for them and we had a, a bit of a, uh, a do one evening and uh, on the 19th John and his family went off John Davis came on as the lighthouse keeper and as we had not been told anything at all from the powers that be uh, we uh, Put out, oh, made Alan the uh, acting head keeper. On the 19th, we got a message to say that uh, that I was to be the acting head keeper, and uh, so things changed somewhat. I was then felt it was not quite right to uh, to make fun of the, the light keepers on the island, and so I stopped producing the little magazine. Uh, Anne went off again uh, around about that time. Uh, the, uh, the um, mutton birds arrived on the island somewhere around about the beginning of October. We had Bill May and the mechanic out there. And uh, as I was now looking after the paperwork and so on, uh, I started running things the way I felt that they should be. Started off by taking the extra weight off the winder and the rope off the handle so that the uh, the machinery ran uh, properly. It now uh, at that, it then ran for about one and a half hours on a wind. I also uh, lowered the pressure in the tanks to where it should have been, somewhere around about 75 psi. Uh, by the 8th of October, Bill May, the mechanic, was uh, was gone again, uh, and. Uh, we, uh, I was busily bringing uh, all the paperwork and so on up to date, which uh, over the years had been had got a little slack, and uh, things weren't quite the way they should have been. So we did a major stock take and sorted all that out. About this time, I uh, stopped keeping a diary, so uh, I won't quote dates from now on <laughs> because I have no idea what happened when particularly, but. Um, uh, uh, about this time, uh, Alan decided that he would apply for uh, a permanent appointment in the service, and ultimately the answer came back, um, bye bye. So, uh, unfortunately, we lost uh, Alan and Kay and the kids. And uh, over the next uh, month or two, we had um, relief keepers coming and going. John Cook joined us and then later Peter Price and his family and uh, after Christmas I think it must have been somewhere around about February uh, when we were trying to sort out some semblance of order to the place uh, the powers that be decided they'd transfer Anne and I up to Edgerton Point so we packed up and off we went and that was the end of uh, life as we knew it on Tasman Island.